Okay. I have no idea what we're going to have to watch. <laughs> well, this is Medium Fleur. This is a video recorded or uploaded to YouTube June 26, 2017. I've just analyzed one of her videos called um, Medium Fleur, A Clown in a Graveyard. Now, okay. When you see it, you'll realize that I just explained the story of a clown in the graveyard, but it really didn't have anything to do with Fleur. Well, it sort of does, okay? Anyway, so that's on the channel. I've made a playlist for Fleur, medium Fleur. And I'm really, I really think it's a good idea when you find a series of videos all from the same time period, all from the same day, same reading, like a gallery reading. It's a really good idea to look at a bunch of them. You know, it might be six or seven. It can get really tedious, but you start to pick up patterns. You start to pick up, you know, the flow of things and you can see how this might be, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's a good way of looking at videos. Now let's keep in mind that the video I'm about to show you is a four minute reading. It's been edited for her channel it's four minutes 21 seconds now she does not have to upload a video of four minutes and 21 seconds so the where it starts there's a reason why it starts where it starts she edited it that way to uh, be this way so whatever is at the very beginning and whatever is at the very end where the start and the stop is and if there's any cuts in it I don't know I haven't watched this should be interesting um, it, it it's there done purposely is what I'm trying to say so a video on somebody's channel their YouTube channel means that they think it represents them well or it's a good indicator of of what they can do they're not going to upload something that's garbage or they look stupid or, you know, it's a bunch of failures. It's going to be something they think they represents them well. So there are three videos on her YouTube channel from this event that she's done. It's called uh, in Burbank. I guess it's Burbank, California, back in 2017. And there's three videos. So out of all her readings that she did that day, these three she thinks represent her well enough to be able to put up on her YouTube channel. So I don't know. Is that is that good, bad, or just something completely different? I have not seen this. You're watching it for the first time. I'm watching it for the first time. So let's watch it together and see what we come up with. Um, I'm going to, I got my pencil. I got my paper. I'm going to take some notes. It's always best to have a transcript of these. If you're going to do a reading, I mean, if you're getting a reading from somebody, it's best to transcribe, really get a good indication. Taking notes is never uh, good enough. It just isn't. You can't remember. But because I'm taking notes and then immediately we're going to talk about it and I could go back and play the video if I really wanted to again, then that's all right. So my my point is don't go to a reading, Take think that you're taking notes, especially because it's emotional, everything's happening so fast and you're, you're really trying to concentrate on what the medium is telling you. Don't assume that you could just take notes and that's going to be good enough to be able to, you're going to remember because there's a lot of wordplay that goes in there in these. And maybe there's wordplay in this. Who knows? Maybe she's going to contact the dead right now and we're going to you and I are going to hear it all. It's going to be right there. And the cat, well, the cat's sleeping. So, you know, we, we're good for a few minutes. It's four minutes, 21 seconds. I don't know if I'm going to stop and interrupt, but let's, let's, let's see. I don't know. I, I think these are always entertaining to do it this way. So you never know what you're going to get. Got a woman stepping forward here on my left. I know that she is somebody's mother. I know that to be important. And I also feel here that there is a child of hers in the life that does a lot of caretaking for her, is very much around her during this time, would have helped to administer pain meds and things of that nature. I know that's very important to her. Um, I know as she steps forward here as well uh, that she is quite sassy and uh, 
has got quite a number of things to say. Um, and I know that uh, there's also a daughter in the world that she needs to recognize. So, um, so you absolutely see here that she was in like one of those automatic wheelchairs and she wouldn't have been able to get out too much is the feeling, like very dependent on it if I go out in public. And swelling of the feet, do you see that? Like very painful to put me in shoes, you know, is the feeling. Um, like these are killing me, but I know her feet, her feet would have killed her too. <laughs> and it does feel to me like there's caretaking there too. So I know that there's very much the feeling of one of my children takes a very active part in my caretaking towards the end of my life. Yes. See. Um, I also want to recognize here with her that there's a sassiness about her is my feeling yes. where I say it exactly how I call it, you know, or I, I say it how I see it and uh, she's not going to apologize to, mm -hmm. to anyone. You see this as well? Yes. Um, I know that she's concerned about her roots towards the end of her life because I know that she must have uh, liked her hair to be done um, as well as to be dyed. Do you see that? No. There's do you see that she likes her hair to be done? Yes. Okay, it feels very important to me that my hair is done. Yes. Um, and it feels like I'm very concerned about what my hair looks like before I pass, is my feeling as well. Yes. Do you understand that? Like, almost like she prepares her hair to pass, because she's like, it's, it's got to look good. <laughs> like, yes. Like, we got to look good. Um, and she knows she's going to pass, you see. She's very aware of that. Um, all the same, I feel she's got a fighting spirit, and there's something about it where... I want to recognize uh, having had ailments um, and, and uh, surpassing them beyond anybody's expectation. You see this? Yes. There's a feeling of, I just keep going, you see? Yes. And I know she's got this fighting spirit within her where she's like, it's going to take a lot to take me down, you see? And yeah. she just keeps going and she keeps going. Um, I know here, too, that you must have kids of your own. Do you see this? No. Then where are her two grandkids that she speaks of? They're with me. They're with you. Okay, so you take care of her two grandkids? Yes. Okay, because um, I was going to say, I feel like there's two kids connected to you that she wants to say you're doing a fabulous job with, okay? Yes. And uh, she just wants you to see them. As much as you may see her as a mother-in-law, but she feels like a mother to you, that's the same way I see these kids with you. You understand yes. that? You are their mom, are you know? You? Even though you might not be the biological mother, that's the feeling that I get. And so she wants you to know that she's helping to take care of these kids with you. And uh, if you need some help, just call her over. Because uh, <laughs> I feel like she'll keep them in line, you see? Not going to let them get away with much. I want to say that she actually really wants to thank you. I think you went. Ooh, okay, that's enough for the moment. So let's just, let's just see where we're at. There's a bunch of empty spots in that audience. Just pointing that out there. Probably no more than 200 people. Still, we're playing the law of large numbers. So here is a medium in front of 200 people. And she wants to know if somebody in the audience has a mother at the end of life using one of those big wheelchairs that um, had swollen feet in very bad shape. And her daughter took care of her. and was or was some part of the caregiving and she, i don't know why this woman raised her hand there must have been about 50 people who raised their hands but for some reason this woman was selected nobody has explained to me why fleur or whatever medium has to go through this nonsense of describing this person why does she not stand up on stage and say, um, I have uh, Janet uh, Wellington here. She wants to talk to her daughter, Marie, who um, she wants to talk to her about how much, you know, how she took care of her and how she really hated the way you, you know, the bath water you made was way too hot. It was like you're scal scalding her. And, um, you know, she's ticked off because she knows that you were sneaking some of her her medications, some of those opioids kind of slipped out of the, you know, and she's very upset at what you did with the garden after she left. And, you know, what the hell did you do to the dog? And why did you do that? Nobody ever does that, right? Okay, nothing even friendly like that. <laughs> because this other thing is working. You can get people in the audience with the, just this nonsense of, does somebody here in the audience have a mother who's died that they took care of at the end of their life. I, I would expect most hands went up. All right. So what do we learn? 
She says, your mom's sassy. Okay, well, whatever. If mom wasn't sassy, if she said, no, my mom was actually a very quiet, demure. She was very um, soft-spoken. She was not sassy. She had no sense of humor whatsoever. Then Fleur would either just move on with that or and pretend and just move on to something else very quickly or Fleur would say well that's not what she thinks she thinks she was very sassy or Fleur would say over now on the other side she's very very uh, sassy she comes across as very sassy in other words Fleur can't lose there's no way you can lose by saying something like that and always gets a little bit of a laugh and you know the audience people like that um she was very concerned about her roots. I was thinking genealogy or maybe something in the garden, <laughs> maybe potatoes and some carrots and onions she was growing. I don't know. <laughs> and then it turned out it was, had to do with her hair. And um, I wrote the word dyed, her hair dyed. And then the, the person in the audience said, nope. <laughs> and then Fleur just really quickly says, oh, I mean, done. She 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 wanted her hair done. She's like, yeah, okay. And she goes, and then it was a little awkward because the way Fleur made it sound like she knew she was going to die and she was con concerned about her hair. She was getting her hair done because uh, she wanted it done for when she dies. And the woman in the audience kind of was like, mm, okay. <laughs> now, I think I don't know. Uh, I take care of my mom before she died and she had lots of friends. And I think that I do remember sometimes they would get their hair done and somebody would say that they wanted to have it done in case they died. It's just one of those things people say, but I don't know. It didn't come off real well, but maybe she was in, she was in a wheelchair at the end of her life and her feet were really swollen and her and very painful and you know why why are we going on and on about this kind of stuff why does the dead want to talk about that kind of thing i would think that if there was people communicating with the dead they'd have an awful lot more to say than how painful their feet were and that they were in a wheelchair at the end of life i mean come on really it's just and it is kind of just general for somebody who is um at the end of life that they would be in pain that maybe they'd be having problems walking, maybe problems with their feet. Diabetes is a real problem with a lot of people. And and if you're diabetic, you're, you have problems with your feet. Another thing she says is she just kept going. Well, I don't know. That just was just too generic. You have children. Now, how did she word it? I'm trying to remember because this is the first time I've seen it. See, I've already started to forget. It was just like three minutes ago. Do you have children or you have children? And she says, nope. And she says, oh, but why, why am I getting two grandchildren? And she says, because I'm raising them. And I, that got a little confusing. I don't know why is she raising two grandchildren? That, and I guess I think of her as her mom and, and uh, you're not the biological mother, but they, but you are their mother. And the woman starts crying and stuff. And then I think she says something about a mother-in-law. She said something about, um, yeah, I, I would have to go back and relook at that again or listen to that again. You guys, you guys can go ahead and do that and let me know in the comments. That's fine. Let's go back because I, I, I'm not thinking of anything else at the moment. Let's see. We're, we're more than halfway done, thankfully. Out of your way to help her, you see? out of your way to help her towards the end of your, her yes. life. And I feel that it was not expected of you or not even, um, uh, it wasn't something you, you were obligated to do in any way. You see that? Yes. And I know she's very aware of that too because I know that she must have been in a comatic state towards the end of her life as well where she goes kind of in and out between worlds. Yes. And I know people were beside me at that time, collected around me and she's very aware of it. So she wants you to know that she absolutely knew people were there. Absolutely knew people were there. Um, this lady, your mother-in-law, loves photographs. Do you yes. see this? 
Um, if you came over to her house, she would show you 700 photographs, is my feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but she's showing me all the kids right now and all the grandkids, and she's like, look at this one, look at this one. And she's so sweet. And I feel that there's a real feeling of if I were to go into her home, I would have photographs everywhere. Do you see that? Yes. Absolutely everywhere. So I know that she still keeps people in her heart just like that, uh, very connected. Once again, wants you to know that, that she sees you as a daughter. All right. And uh, that feels uh, so, so, so important. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, well, somewhere in there, there was something about a daughter-in-law and a mother-in-law that came out. Now, I don't know if I missed it or if it was cut um, out of there somehow. You guys, you tell me. I think there was something cut at the very beginning because... Um, probably the part where Fleur is in that part of the uh, beginning where they're trying to figure out if it's this person or that person, who are we, who are we in touch with, which, which person is the reading for? It looks like some of it was cut out of there. Maybe there was a mother-in-law. Uh, maybe she says, oh, it's my mother-in-law, not my mother. And that's missing. Well, you guys tell me something, something's missing there because she, she knows it's a mother-in-law and not a mother and it was not expected that you would be taking care of her well if it's your mother-in-law yeah it's not expected that you would be taking care of her that's that's there at the end of her life when she is dying she's going in and out kind of in a coma kind of thing well yeah i mean this woman didn't die by falling out of an airplane she certainly wasn't scuba diving and some problem with her tank of her, of her um, scuba gear. This is a woman who is in very bad health, uh, probably elderly and in a lot of pain. And she probably died in hospice or at home or, you know, not like a surprise somewhere, not in a car accident or, or, or murder or anything like that. It was a it was something where people were all gathered around watching and waiting and she went in and out. This is common. Photographs, photographs everywhere. Oh, I wish I could show you guys my, my office right now. I can't, I can't do it right now, but I have photographs everywhere. There's one right here, but there are literally photographs everywhere you can see. I adore photographs memories most of the photographs are of people i am a very big people person and i i want and this was even more um, important to me during the pandemic when we were home and we were um, separated from people i took it very seriously and i stayed without people I did a lot of things over zoom i would um it's it's hard for me to not have people around me and feel um socializing with people so i put pictures up everywhere even more than normal so that i would always have memories to look at i could glance i can glance up from anywhere in my room here now and i can glance up and i can see a memory and it makes me happy memories and so photographs especially when you get later in life can mean so much to people so she said first that photographs are important to your mother-in-law or that she has a lot of photographs. Well, that's kind of typical of most people, especially when they get a smartphone. Have you guys been around people and they're like, oh, let me show you this picture. And you're going, oh, please don't show me this picture because they sit there and they scroll, you know, through their phone. And, the, and then it's here somewhere. And then, you know, there's like 50 shots of the cat in, you know, just perfect. They don't know how to delete anything. I've worked in the photography business for 34 years. And we called it uh, um, Clicks Gone Wild. Because <laughs> people were just getting like, take a picture. Don't take multiple pictures of the same. But my point is, there's a lot of photographs that people get on their cameras. And they never go back and delete a lot of them. If they haven't printed, um, they, you know, it's just. So your mother-in-law had a lot of photographs. Okay, whatever. Again, if if she says no no she doesn't like photographs she doesn't keep them she she she's not into that 
well then i guess floor would have just passed on that moved along we'd never see the video because it would never appear on her channel if there's too many no's too many no's negatives in there but floor might say ah but i see a box of photographs it's in the closet and it's uh there's a lot of pictures in there black and white there's not a lot of names written on them that is a very very common things that psychics say is that there's a box of photographs the cardboard box or whatever in the closet in the back of the closet and that way she would have been able to get out of that without having a negative she if she, so if, if her mother-in-law doesn't have the photographs out then the photographs would be in storage somewhere and it's a mother-in-law and now she sees you as a daughter and she's seeing you this way and everybody's crying and yeah whoo okay <laughs> he's not impressed at all i don't know about you guys what do you think was that a hit would you consider that to be you know 750 pounds or whatever it is or 200 dollars or whatever her reading would be that was four minutes what did she tell this woman your mother-in-law appreciates that you took care of her at the end of life there's a lot of pain when she died she had a lot of photographs and she wants her hair done. Oh, and something about the kids that they, she's glad you're taking care of them. And if you need advice, just call her over. She'll come help you. I'm not quite sure how that works. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't feel like that was worth $200 or anything, actually. Again, what is missing? A name? No, no names. She doesn't even know the name of the woman in the audience, does she? Or the person who was handing her a, a tissue. Is that her sister sitting next to her? Is it actually the daughter of the woman or the mother-in-law? That would be really interesting. If the woman is singled out as being the caregiver for her mother-in-law, but right next to her is her daughter, and the daughter is going, oh, yeah? Why is mom talking to her and not talking to me? Why is she getting all of the goods of caretaking? Because I did an awful lot of caregiving. I had to quit my job. I had to, you know, I practically ruined my health taking care of my mom. But yet my sister-in-law sitting next to me is getting all the kudos about, about my mother-in-law, about her mother-in-law. Little resentment there? Maybe so. It makes it sound like this one person took care of her mother-in-law and she's the big hero and all the other siblings are going to see this and go okay well that's what about us why weren't we mentioned why you know so my point is is a lot of stuff that is missing that should be there if you were in communication with the dead and they could tell you about how painful their shoes were and how painful their ankles were and how they have photographs all over the place and just how she wants her hair done if you can if you can get that from somebody from the dead and that's like the thing they want to talk about then i think they can give you a little more detail than that and let's talk about the other people why didn't she name the grandkids and she said two grandkids and then she made it sound like a little farther on that there were more grandkids all the grandkids or something like that as if there was more than two the only thing i really want to tell you here is that under this video i'll put the link to this video for whatever reason you want to have it in the description under this video one person five years ago whose name is maloney j26 they wrote rubbish that's all they wrote there is no more um comments it's got 5834 views and one comment that says rubbish five years ago this is almost the last video that i i've seen on fleur's um youtube channel i don't know if she's still active oh dear here comes the cat fleur Fleur, I don't know if she's still active or not, but um, we'll see. So Imogen's here to remind you all how much she appreciates when you like, 
the videos, leave comments and share the videos and please subscribe. Is that right? Imogen loves it when you subscribe to the channel and she badly would like you to hit the little alarm so that you're notified whenever I upload more videos. I may do the last video of Fleur. Let's see. It's taken at the same event. Oh, when I was checking out that, did you guys check out the, and whenever Fleur is walking on the stage in the background, you could see the little timer that had 22 seconds on it. Did you guys watch that? I was checking that out because it was glowing in the background from the angle the photographer was, the videographer was doing. And I kept thinking, oh, that'll tell us if something has been edited out because it'll go from one time that suddenly to, you know, a gap of a minute or something. But I was looking at it and it looks like it was just kind of stuck on 22 seconds. I don't know. I was taking notes. Maybe you guys pay better attention than I did. And you'll notice something. Let's see what the next video has. I, I think we have time. Let's do another video.